Hey, it's Bjorn from High Learning Lab. In this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to talk about the magic wand tool and how you can use it to select stuff more intelligently in your compositions and your images. So right now we're in Photoshop. I have a nice little picture of a red boat in some northern ocean. The title of the photo says Greenland, so it must be near Greenland. But that's neither here nor there. What we're talking about this magic wand tool. And in your toolbar on the left, or in my case on the left, might be somewhere else in your case, but we have this thing that looks like a wand. It looks like a stick with maybe a firework at the end. You hover over it, it says magic wand tool. You click on it, and up at the top, you have some magic wand options. Yours look different than mine, depending on what it was set to previously, or if you never used it, it's just set to all the default settings. But at its simplest, we just clicked on the wand tool. I'm gonna to click somewhere on the image, and it's gonna select some stuff. And I can keep clicking in areas that I didn't select, and it's gonna keep selecting things. And why does it do that? Or how does it decide what to select and how much of it? Well, what it does is I have it currently set to point sample. So wherever I click this wand, so I'm clicking in the white area, it's gonna select everything that is white, that has that exact color white exactly where I clicked, to within a tolerance of 50. If I increase this tolerance to let's say 100, you'll see how when I had 50, it, it stopped right here. I'm gonna click over here again. Now that's at 100, it selects way over the whole sky, just selected the whole sky. And that's because with the higher tolerance, you will be able to diverge from your original color selection further. If you want to be closer to your color selection, so if you really want just the white stuff, you reduce your tolerance. Put this down to zero even, and it's gonna be an even smaller area. So this area, theoretically, is the exact same color as the one I clicked, because there's zero tolerance. We have zero tolerance for anything else. And you might want to select all of the same color in an image. Right now I have the check mark for continuous checked. If I uncheck that and I click here again, it didn't do anything because the image isn't perfect. Um, let me see. There's going to be an area here where it's going to select multiple areas, like, like this one for example. It's selecting multiple disconnected areas because I have continuous unchecked. If you check continuous, that means that your selection has to be all in one piece. If you uncheck it, you can have a selection from anywhere in the, in the picture. Here's some other examples that are harder to see because they look, they look really close together. Let me just increase the tolerance a little so you can see it better. Here's a good example. We selected down here. This is its own selection area. Here's some more selections that are, are separate. Here's some more that are separate, some more that are separate, because continuous is unchecked. If I recheck this, click down here again, it only selects areas that are actually attached, as in continuous. And that is the continuous option for your selection tool. And we can actually also change the sample size. So when it's on point sample, it just selects a very tight area even just the one t shade that you click on when you're clicking. And all of these expand the range of your selection and it averages the color. So if we use three by three and click up in this kind of bluey white area, it's gonna take a three by three sample, take an average of what that color is and then select everything that's within that average. If we increase to 101 by 101, our selection area is gonna be much bigger when we click in the same spot because the average is bigger. And then if we increase the tolerance, of course, that's gonna be bigger as well. So you have a lot of different tools to adjust how much or how little you're selecting of something. And of course, when you're working with your image, you will know what you want to select and you will make these adjustments according to the results you're getting when you click or when you select something. And then you'll be able to further and further refine what your selection is selecting. And the other thing that's very important so we have a big selection right here. If we use, or currently we have the, the, the add-on selection or add to selection, every time we click somewhere else it adds to the selection. We can also use the subtract from selection and that subtracts things. So I'm gonna just reduce this down to 20, maybe change the average size to 11 by 11. And I wanna subtract this color area up here. And we can see below the one there's a little minus sign that denotes subtraction. And then below the wand here, we have a plus sign when we change it back to add to selection. So if we subtract, we click up here and it just subtracts 
This area and took the 11 by 11 average of where it clicked with a tolerance of 20 amps and subtracted it from our overall selection. We can also select the difference by clicking on this option. So if we click here, it's only going to click the, or select the parts that overlap. So by clicking here at 11 by 11 with a tolerance of 20, it's going to select a certain area and it's going to deselect everything outside of that area. So if I do that right now, you see that it selects this roughly trapezoidal rectangular shape and it deselected everything else, which is pretty handy. And then you may have an application where you use the same type of selection over and over or you have a couple different selection settings you always use. What you want to do is choose this preset area. There's a little down arrow beside the magic wand on the top left. And whatever you have saved as your selection up here right now, not the selection on the image itself, but what your tool settings are. If you click on this little button here, you can name it something awesome, like my awesome magic wand preset one. And that becomes a preset. So if somebody comes along, or if you even come along, and you change the selection for a different image, say you do something like that, and you, you think, oh, wait, I had that wicked selection setting last week, but I don't remember what it was. We well, don't have to remember because it's right here. We click on this and all of these will be set back to what it was when we saved it. And there we have it. And you can have as many of these as you want. If you use a bunch of different tool settings, I really encourage you to use the preset because you will be able to work a lot faster by using that. And then, of course, when you like a lot of selection tools, when you make a selection like this, you have the refine edge option. If we click on there, there's all kinds of options to refine the actual edge. So here we zoom in. That edge is not very pretty. And you can do things like select the smart radius and increase it to, let's say, one pixel. It can smooth it out a bit. Sometimes it takes a moment to render. There we go. It smoothed it out a little tiny bit. Uh, and you can have smooth edge, feather, contrast, decontaminate color. So if there's a color that was next to the one you selected, that kind of bleeds in a little bit, depending on how the picture was taken. The decontaminate colors really helps a lot. But I've got a separate video just on the refine edge option box because it's so powerful. I'm not going to get into too much detail here with that. And with that, actually, that's all there is to know about the selection tool. Just click on the, or sorry, the magic wand selection tool. Just click on the magic wand, play with the settings until you get the results that you want when you're selecting on your image. And you can press Command D or Control D to deselect. And that's about it. I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from High Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video, share on social media, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and check out highlearninglab.com where I publish tech tutorials like this every single day. Talk to you soon.